Hello anatomy students, this video covers part two of the appendicular skeleton practical. We're going to talk today about the pelvis and the pelvic girdle. Now you may be wondering what's the difference between those two terms. Well, remember that a girdle is simply a ring of bone that is going to surround the torso and it serves as an attachment point for the extremities. So just like the pectoral girdle served as an attachment point for the arms, the pelvic girdle is going to serve as um, an attachment point for our legs. And so the, uh, if we're talking about the pelvic girdle, we are talking about the hip bones, also known as the coxal bones which um, is actually three different bones that have been fused together in order to form this, this ring. And then the other bone that is included in the pectoral girdle is the sacrum. So what we're looking at here is the anterior view of the pectoral, well, this is actually the pelvis, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but we're looking at the anterior view. Um, so we're actually looking at the anterior surface of the sacrum here. Um, so again, the pelvic girdle includes the coxal bones, which are all fused together to form this rather large bone, um, and it includes the sacrum. Now, on this model, since we also have the cossacks, which you can see at the very bottom, the little tailbone where my pinky is pointing. Since we've got the coccyx there, this is actually a model of the pelvis. So the pelvis includes the coccyx, the sacrum, and the coxal bones, whereas the pelvic girdle just includes the two coxal bones and the sacrum. Okay, so I'll try and flip this over so that we can look at the posterior aspect here. There we are. So the first two bones to know of the, uh, and I'll call this the pelvis, is the sacrum, which we've studied already, and the coccyx, which is down here. And if we take a look at those bones on my skeleton, We are. Here we have the sacrum, and here we have the coccyx. Now the sacrum is going to join with the two coxal bones on each side at a joint that is called the sacroiliac joint. And I'll explain that in just a moment. Okay, uh, one thing that I do want to clarify about the model that you're looking at here is that, um, you know, the bones of the pelvic girdle are not, like, simply floating. There's usually a pillow here of cartilage, um, but uh, it, it, I, it, it's missing from this model just so that I can kind of move it around a little bit more, but I just wanted to point that out to you. Okay. So let's take a look at the coxal bones, which are both a part of the pelvic girdle and of the pelvis itself. So the coxal bones, um, there are three of them. They're called the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. So one thing that you'll notice about our pelvis slash pelvic girdle is that it's got these very large um, like wing-like structures of bone. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the whole thing into your view. Okay, um, and we have these large wings of bone here. These um, belong to the first bone called the ilium. And as I mentioned on the skeleton, our sacrum is going to articulate with the ilium in two places, creating what's known as the sacroiliac joint. 
at the very top portion, at the rim of uh, the ilium, you have this ridge or, you know, just the endings of the bones. This is called the iliac crest. And if you put your hands on your hips and you feel your hip bones, that's actually what you are feeling is the bone of um, a part of the ilium called the iliac crest. And I wanted you to know this because it's a very important landmark um, for those of you who go on to practice health care. If you're going to give intramuscular injections, then um, you need that crest as a landmark, and so you need to know where it is. Okay, so again, let's take a look at our skeleton here. And uh, again, we're looking at the posterior view of the skeleton. And so here you can see the iliac crest. And then these are the large flattened portions of the bone that is called the ilium. Now, let me turn our skeleton around. So now we are looking at the anterior view. And again, you can see how the bones kind of flare out. And look at um, how the uh, connection in the front, it's not exactly, it's not like a belt, you know, around your waist. It's kind of angled downward a little bit. But um, this bone and this wing here, that is the ilium. And then here, again, you can see very well the articulation between the sacrum and the ilium called the sacroiliac joint. Okay, so while we're here, let's take a look at the second bone to know called the ischium. And the ischium is called the, the sit bone because when you sit down, the bony part of your buttocks is the ischium, is this part right down here. So the ischium is this bottom portion, let's move this around, is the bottom portion of our uh, pelvis um, and pelvis girdle. So let's take a look at that over here. Okay, so our ischium is going to uh, fuse with our ilium. It's going to form the bottom portion of this large socket, which we'll get to uh, in just a moment. Um, and then here is the portion here that you feel like the bony part of your butt. Uh, and then it's also going to fuse anteriorly with um, another bone as well, which we'll get to in just a moment, helping to form this ring, this opening that we have here. So I'm gonna turn the pelvis on its side because one landmark that I would like you to know that's a part of the ischium is this notch that we have here. This notch is called the greater sciatic notch. And this is where um, a nerve, maybe you've heard of the sciatic nerve, and blood vessels are able to leave from the center of the pelvis. They exit through this notch, and then they innervate the posterior side of the thigh. And so um, maybe you've heard of somebody who has sciatica. Um, it causes a great deal of pain and tingling in their lower back and legs. Um, and usually that's because this nerve has been pinched somewhere along the way. So this is called the greater sciatic notch. And so once again, the, the bone that is fused with the ilium, but that forms the bottom portion of this socket and forms your sit bone, the bony part of your butt, that's called the ischium. And so uh, one thing that, one little saying that I like to say is illy, ischy, tishy. So the ilium, the ischium, and then that forms your butt. So illy, ischy, tishy, <laughs> and it forms your bottom. So maybe that'll help you to remember the name of the ischium itself. 
Okay, and so f- the last bone is the bone that's going to form this very f- an- the most anterior portion of the pelvis and the pelvic girdle, and it also um, extends um, down here. It's going to fuse with the ischium and fuse with the ilium here on top uh, in order to form two structures to know. The, um, the first structure to know is the large opening that you have on the inferior aspect of the pelvis, where my thumbs are here. This is called the obturator foramen. And just like the greater sciatic notch allows for nerves and blood vessels to exit the posterior aspect of the pelvis to reach the posterior thigh, the obturator foramen is a passageway for nerves and blood vessels to exit the pelvis anteriorly and to serve the anterior aspect of the thigh. So this is called the obturator foramen. Now the other part that the pubis helps to form uh, by merging with both the ilium and the ischium is this large socket. This socket is called the acetabulum, which means vinegar cup. So I guess you could see that, like, you could pour some vinegar in there and drink it, I guess. What, what you know, apple cider vinegar or something. But um, this is called the acetabulum. Notice the size of it. Notice how um, nice and round it is. Um, this is the socket that will accept the head of the femur in order to form the hip joint. So um, this is called the acetabulum, and it's formed by the fusion of the three coxal bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Okay, and then finally, the last thing that I wanted to show you on the skeleton is you can see that our two pubis bones are connected to each other by this pillow of cartilage. And this cartilage uh, is going to form a joint that is called the pubic symphysis. The pubic symphysis. Okay, so let's review these structures on our skeleton. Uh, Remember that the pelvic girdle involves the coxal bones, the three coxal bones, and the sacrum, while the pelvis includes the coxal bones, the sacrum, and the coccyx. So if we look at the posterior aspect of our model, here is the sacrum, here is the coccyx, And the sacrum and the ilium forms an articulation called the sacroiliac joint. These large wings of bone are a part of the ilium. And the very top portion of the ilium is called the iliac crest. Other things that you can see from the posterior aspect is the ischium. and the sciatic, the greater sciatic notch. From the anterior view, here are the two edges of the sacrum that articulates with the ilium at the sacroiliac joint. So here's the articulation. This is the iliac crest. Again, a landmark that's used when you're giving an intramuscular injunction, uh, injection. And then you can also see the top portion of the pubis and the joint 
in the center of the two pubis bones called the pubic symphysis, the pubic symphysis. Okay, now let's take a look. Those are probably the easiest things to see on the skeleton. Let's take a look at our model once again, um, just with the, the pelvis. So this is the posterior aspect of the pelvis, and here, the sacrum, the coccyx, and the ischium. Looking at the anterior aspect, you can see the sacroiliac joint, the ilium, the iliac crest, sorry, just trying to adjust here. Okay, the iliac crust, excuse me. We have the pubic bone or the pubis. And remember that there should be a connection here called the pubic synthesis. Looking at the side view or the lateral view, the ischium the obturator foramen, the acetabulum. And there was one more thing that I wanted to make sure to review with you on the posterior aspect of the ischium, and that's this notch called the greater sciatic notch. Now, let's take a look at just a, a coxal bone that's not attached to anything else. And so here, remember that the obturator foramen can tell you what the anterior side of the coxal bone is. So this is the anterior aspect and then the posterior aspect is here. And so uh, looking anteriorly, this is where the pubic symphysis would, would be located. This is the pubic bone. the ischium, and then up here we have the ilium. The ischium and the pubic bone form this hole called the obturator foramen, and all three coxal bones fuse to form the acetabulum, the socket that accepts the head of the femur. Looking posteriorly, again, this is part of the ischium here, and this is called the greater sciatic notch. Finally, the ilium and the iliac crest and this roughened portion is the part that articulates with the sacrum. So this is where you would find the sacroiliac joint if the sacrum were here. And so that is, the, those are the coxal bones on their own. Okay, everyone, thank you for listening. I hope you learned a lot, and I'll see you in class.